speaking of Gamescom, there were some other announcements, not Xbox related, although I guess it technically is on Xbox, uh, but it's related to Final Fantasy. They had all kinds of different uh, Final Fantasy announcements. Yeah, uh, that was kind of took me by surprise. Well, first of all, they had the Pocket Edition, which uh, that kind of that was a huge surprise. Yeah, because um, uh, I thought that was really interesting what they were doing with that. Uh, so essentially, the Pocket Edition, at least what it looks like to me, is kind of like uh, they're they're taking visuals similar to say World of Final Fantasy. Yeah, the kind of super the, deformed look. Yeah, they're kind of doing that chibi, super deformed kind of style to it. Mm -hmm. But you're essentially playing through the story of Final Fantasy 15, and it's available for iOS, Android, and Windows 10 devices, which who the hell uses a Windows 10 phone? Yeah, I, but, I know nobody that owns a Windows phone. <laughs> I'm sure they probably only threw that in there because you can probably play it on like a tablet or a laptop or something like that. Yeah. But anyways, that looks pretty interesting. Uh, the gameplay is going to be somewhat different, of course, given the limitations of mobile platforms. Yeah. But, At least they left the cooking in it. Yeah, the cooking, of course. <laughs> I... <laughs> So that'll be interesting, to, uh, of course. Uh, I really haven't had a chance to play Final Fantasy XV much. Did you make much progress on it, or? No, I, I when I when it comes to newer games like that, I usually will wait until they release like the definitive version, so I'm not blowing all kind of extra money on DLC and stuff like that. So that's one of the ones I've been waiting on. Okay, so you haven't even bought the game yet? Is that no? Okay, I got you. Well, in my situation, it was kind of funny. I actually, um, you know. Basically, where I work, uh, once a year we get like a special discount on merchandise that we sell. And some of the things we sell, of course, are video games. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, well, you know, I'm getting this special discount. And I decided I'd go ahead and pick up Final Fantasy 15 because it literally just came out. And the discount even applied to the season pass. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll go ahead and get the season pass too because I'm getting a discount on that also. Uh,. So I'm going to get all the DLC when I eventually do play it, but I just, I haven't really spent a lot of time. I think I'm on like chapter three or something like that. <laughs> there's like 15 chapters, so I need to start cracking on it. But I understand there's a lot of problems with the game and they've been doing patches and things like that. So eventually when I do get around to it, once I decide, you know what, I need to play a huge open world game, um, I'll pop that in and yeah. I'll probably have the best experience I possibly can since they'll have all these patches and all these new things added, like this other DLC that they announced, <laughs> which is completely free, by the way. Yeah, so this is really cool. shocks the hell out of me. Yeah, so um, you were actually the one that told me about this DLC, cause, so tell us all about it. Yeah, it's called the Assassin's Festival. Uh, it comes out on August 31st, and essentially it's like the Final Fantasy characters are transplanted into Assassin's Creed world. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. So, like, it, 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 I've seen the gameplay trailers. Yeah. And it actually has, like, these segments where it actually uses the mechanics of Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, the climbing of the buildings. To climb the buildings and, and stuff like that. That's yeah, really interesting. I don't, I, I don't know what to think of that. I mean, I can understand, like, I've, I saw some, some uh, chat about it and people were, like, complaining that that's not what Final Fantasy is all about. Final Fantasy is not about climbing buildings and jumping down on people's heads with knives. But <laughs> it's... I mean, do you really want to just be constantly doing the same thing in the game? To me, I mean, it sounds interesting, and it's it's kind of cool that uh, Square actually got together with Ubisoft and worked something out to let this happen to begin with. Right. It, you know. So, it, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like a lot of people be like, "Oh, I wonder how much money Ubisoft threw at him or something like that." Which Maybe I'm it was sure the other way around. <laughs> well. You know, I doubt it was either the case. You know, I'm sure that there's actually some mutual respect between the two companies. Um, you know, in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point Ubisoft and Square Enix merge. Because um, the cat's out of the bag when it comes to Ubisoft. Um, are you familiar with Viv Vivendi? No, no, I'm not. Okay, so Vivendi is this huge French company that they actually used to own Blizzard Inter. Well, they're called Vivendi Universal, yes. Yeah. Um, but they actually used to own Blizzard and Sierra. Mm. But they ended up selling them off to Activision. And Activision kind of did this weird merger. It wasn't like just a straight sale. They also did this weird merger thing to where they merged with Blizzard and Sierra to create Activision Blizzard as they're now known. 
But mm. um, the Vindies has apparently had a lot of interest in getting back into the whole video game thing. And they started buying out stock and things like that in Ubisoft. And uh, a lot of people are thinking about that they might be trying to do a hostile takeover of Ubisoft. So um, I wonder if maybe this DLC might be a sign of times that maybe Ubisoft's trying to maybe warm up to some other uh, big publisher like uh, like Square Enix, for example. Buy us out first. <laughs> yeah, and maybe they're maybe they're thinking like that's kind of like the lesser of two evils, like work with a competing publisher rather than getting bought out by this huge multinational conglomerate. You know. Yeah. So. At least they might still have control over the kind of output they have. Right, and Square Enix has really demonstrated that uh, uh, w- that with Eidos, because they kind of took over Eidos. And, but they still uh, let them do their thing. Yeah, for more or less. I mean, yeah. Square Enix did do some kind of messed up stuff with, like, uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, but yeah. for the most part, they've done pretty good. Uh, with I mean, the Tomb Raider stuff, I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, exactly. And uh, so I wonder if that could be something going on, or if maybe I'm just reading too much into that. <laughs> It could be a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, interesting enough, this wasn't even the first time that uh, Square Enix and Ubisoft have worked together on Final Fantasy DLC. Mm-hmm. Because Final Fantasy XIII 2, a.k.a. the sequel that nobody played because they hated the first game. You mean you mean uh, Final Hallway? <laughs> uh, it had character DLC from... Uh, both Assassin's Creed and Mass Effect. So you were actually able to make uh, one of the characters in Final Fantasy XIII 2 look like Ezio from Assassin's Creed 2. That's cool. Yeah, so uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. Square Enix is uh, really uh, having fun with these DLC things. but they're hey, not. I just love that you can see a Chocobo running through Assassin's Creed world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, instead of the horse or whatever. Yeah, that is rad. You know, but maybe instead of diving into a bale of haze, you're just diving into a bunch of cactuars and you come out with <laughs> the spikes all over you. <laughs> Subscribe to the DP and me on the iTunes. Do now. Get to the chopper. Get cookie down now.